Minute, mm -hmm. Ajari, you already admitted that there are certain things that have not been perfect with this government. That's true. That's what true. are the things, in your own opinion, have not been perfect with the Buhari administration? Let me, let's, like the relationship between the legislature and the executive, that has not been perfected. There is no cordial relationship between the two arms of government. That's, that, 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 that's true. What about his handling of the herdsman crisis? Well, um, it's also perception. I mean, what do you do with... You, you, you see, the difference between Obasanjo and, and Buhari is... Probably if it were Obasanjo, he would have maybe sent military to kill people. Because it has happened in Odi. It has happened in uh, the same Benue state. But look, in this, I am sure if what the, Benue, what the governor of Benue did to display corpses of 70 people for a funeral. If it were Obasanjo, the story would have been different. So that's, there's difference in approach to issues. Honorable member, on the issue of bloodletting, you know, I think that's where actually Obasanjo started his letter. Just within the last few weeks, we, we saw another former head of state, former military president Ibrahim Babangida, issued a statement saying that the bloodletting must stop. Now, we know that in previous elections, uh, uh, former President Obasanjo has represented a kind of uh, um, think tank of former military leaders in this country that have really steered the direction of elections in this country since the Fourth Republic was established. Now, when Abbasanjo says this as a member of that think tank, is it not an indication to the APC that perhaps the former military leadership that has been so important to the de democratic uh, process has turned against your party ahead of this next election? It's probably the demystification of Abbasanjo has just started. You'll be demystified this time around. You will find out that this letter is not, is not going to work. Because, look, it's not about Buhari. It's about this country. So it's just whatever he wants must be done. That's, that's, that's Obasanjo for you. I'm telling you, if you see how he's killed, you know, from when he was president, and mark you, he is the greatest beneficiary of this country, the greatest beneficiary of democracy. I mean, from when he left how he brought uh, Eradua, Jonathan, and on and on and on. And when things did not go the way he wanted, he comes up with letters. Now, but I'm telling you, this, this is the beginning take of... Uh, a, the president, some people will say that he was quite respectful in, in, the, in the tone of his letter, uh, if you were to compare it with the letter he wrote to President Jonathan. In fact, he calls the president Brother Buhari. And in many instances, he, he says... Let's take a look at this one. It says, I thought President Buhari would fight corruption and insurgency, and he must be given some credit for his achievements so far in these two areas, although it's not yet Uhuru, which the president himself it acknowledges. Is true. It is true. Uh, now, he says, the herdsmen crop farmers issue is being wittingly or unwittingly allowed to turn sour and messy. It's no credit to the federal government that the herdsmen... I beg your pardon, the herdsman rampage continues with careless abandon and without finding an effective solution to it. Have you... Now, in response to some of these accusations, I mean, in terms of how the presidency has handled the farmer herdsman crisis, the presidency says it predated us. But some people also say so did the Boko Haram crisis. That's true. Why then hasn't there been an effective solution to the crisis facing farmers and herdsmen, if that's what it is, in this country? Hasn't, you could see the government has been talking about grazing land, been talking about uh, how they could uh, house the, the herdsmen and their herds in one place and so on. So the government is trying to come up with solutions. As I said, I don't work for government, but you and I read this thing on the page. So the government is trying as much as possible. First of all, why this crisis now? Politics. Unfortunately, some politicians don't value lives. I mean, so, so polit some politicians, some of us in politics, do not care about people's lives. It's about politics. And I'm telling you, this crisis now, it's about 2019. That's, no that's part of the allegations that the president has leveled against, you know, some governors in your party. He talked about how it was callous for a number of governors to go just a day after 73 people or more were reported killed in Benue to endorse the president but, for but if you remember very well that day, I, I, I think I saw a Rufai saying they did not go to endorse the president. They went to pray and they just saw him and said, so it wasn't like an arranged thing for only seven governors to go. 
if they wanted, probably all APC got, uh, governors could have gone. So it's, it's got nothing to do with they went to, condo, uh, to endorse Buhari. And the same governors went to Benue State last week. You know that. And talks about 2019. Where? I talked about 2019. They said, I mean, I heard the governor of Borno State, uh, who's also the current chairman of the uh, governor's forum, the APC governor's forum, saying that, that the APC won in Benue State, in, not because of Buhari, but in spite of Buhari, and that some people are ten, trying to turn this around. So for them, it seems that it all boils down to the elections. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, the people in Benue causing all this problem is politics as well. Sadly. Honorable member, one of the, one of the uh, elements of this that I, I really want to try and get your perspective on is we know that ob uh, of all the former heads of state in this country, former President Obasan Joe takes an international dimension. He's on the boards of so many different uh, committees around the world. He has the ears of so many presidents in the world. Now, th this is somebody who saw the rise of Buhari, who appointed him as Minister of Petroleum and, and all of that. Now, it, when you look at the past and you look forward and that the former president has made his stand clear, he mentioned in the letter that uh, President Buhari's alleged, and this is alleged by Obasanjo, his alleged penchant for clannishness, as uh, former President Obasanjo puts it, has even surprised him. What do you say about the notion that President Buhari favors a certain group of people above every other uh, uh, Nigerian? Well, um, Obasanjo is entitled to his opinion. That's it. So he could say whatever he wants. He's entitled to his opinion. And look, uh, um, as I said earlier, this is the beginning of Obasanjo being demystified in this country. And, and nothing is going to happen to Buhari. Nothing is going to happen to APC. Of course, as I said, there are certain things that are going wrong. It's true. No government is perfect. And when Buhari came, he didn't say, look, tomorrow <laughs> there will be electricity or tomorrow there will be no hunger. No. This thing, the APC spent just two and a half years. Two and a half years. And if any, if you are not, if you, if anybody is saying there is no change in this country, things are not going better, it's not true. Honor, it's all politics. Honorable <clears throat> member, he is now called on uh, all well meaning Nigerians to potentially join this movement that he is now calling Coalition for Nigeria. It, when you look at the nature of our democracy, currently a, essentially a two party state where politicians are just going left and right to each other's parties, do you think that it has, the time has come that we're ripe? for a third force in Nigerian politics, for the advancement and progress of the country? I think so, yes. Why not? Of course. I mean, uh, INEC have registered about 83 parties. I'm sure more are going to come. It's all part of the constitution. The constitution of this country guarantees these kind of things. But the coalition he's talking about, I don't know how this coalition is going to, because unfortunately for him also, the time is too short. It's too well, short. We will see in the coming days whether or not that coalition will happen. Uh, but we have to thank you most kindly for coming on Sunrise Daily. Honorable Farouk Adamoa Liu is a former minority leader of the House of Representatives and also a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress. Sunrise Daily continues in just a moment. Please stay with us.